watch later. Y bienvenidos sí, y aquí viene Juanita. Muy bien. Uh, bienvenido. Bienvenidos y bienvenidas. ¿Cómo están ustedes? Después de, de una semana de, de descanso, after a, a, a rust week, yeah? Uh, sadly, not strictly a wet rust week for me, but still, you know, it, it, it's nice to have a little bit of time off. Okay. Um, vamos a empezar. And I'm going to tell you first, we will, for one session, be kind of segregating, not for the whole class, kind of... It, segregating in a good way, uh, segregating because we're going to take some folks out into a separate room to do some work on a verb they didn't get a chance to do in the step one class because we've got some new people in. And you folks that have been around for a while know this, so I'm not going to subject you to a, a lesson on that, but I have something else for you to do. So there might be a, a couple of sessions, just so you know, where because we've got some new folks coming in from the step one group, um, uh, there will be probably a few sessions where um, I'll do some breakout room things and the, the older veteran folks will, uh, you know, work on something a little more advanced and I'll work on a um, a short lesson that the uh, those folks need to catch up a little bit, which is fine. Um, no importa, that does not matter. So, para que sepan. So today we're going to talk about uh, some plans that I have in mind for our session. Um, and and we're, we're going to actually come back and, and for those of you who've been around for a while, we're going to like sort of recycle and renew some things that you have had, but like, uh, you know, do a little extra practice on them. Things like uh, telling time, things like some stem changing verbs, things that everybody needs a little more work on, you know, uh, that everybody can use some extra practice with. So uh, I'm planning on doing that. We're planning on doing some reading, but we'll talk about that. Uh, a little bit later after our sessions. And uh, we're going to start, vamos a empezar, we're gonna start with kind of a nice video. It is a nice video. I am getting my screen set up here in that. Uh, it kind of talks about what to do when you get stuck in the world of conversation. Uh, what to do when you get held up by a word. There are all, all kinds of little suggestions here. So uh, we're going to take a look at that for beginning. If I can get all my Zoom stuff to cooperate and click all the right buttons. Aquí vamos, here we go but everything is going well. ¿Y qué hiciste ayer? No mucho, tenía mucho trabajo. But suddenly, in the middle of your sentence, there's a word in Spanish you don't know. There's a word you don't know, suddenly in the middle. This happens to everybody. So we're going to talk about what you do when that happens. Después fui a... Uh... And you freeze. Panic, panic, panic. What do I do now? Oh no, how do I say play basketball? I don't know what to say. So your brain freezes and you just stop talking. I am sure you have been in a similar situation where not knowing one word make you feel tongue-tied. No tengas miedo. I, Maria Fernanda from Spring Spanish, I am going to share a secret trick polyglots use when speaking a foreign language. This trick allows you to keep the conversation going even if you miss a word. And best of all, your conversation partner won't even notice. We're going to practice together. By the end of this video, you will start using this trick as well. And you can apply it in conversations yourself. Sounds good? Empecemos! Remember the conversation that suddenly ended at the beginning of this video? Vamos a sacar a la pobre de su miseria. Let's help her and end her sentence. So the key to get out of a situation like this is a technique called paraphrasing. And you might be doing it as well already on your native language, by the way. 
but in this case you need to learn how to do it in Spanish as fast as possible and let me show you what I mean y después fui a jugar este juego con una pelota también LeBron James lo juega baloncesto sí or another way where your conversation partner won't even notice that you didn't know the word y después fui a hacer deporte con mis amigos qué padre cómo te fue bien so what did you do here in the first example you described what you meant with references and examples in the second example you used a different word to say more or less what you were doing I mean, is it really necessary to say that you were playing basketball? Just saying I play sports will be enough to keep the conversation going. Again, you might be doing already this in your mother tongue without even thinking about it. The key is you have to train yourself to this in a high pressure situations in Spanish too, especially in conversations with a native speaker. If you don't practice paraphrasing, you will just freeze. But if you get good at this, you will be amazed of how much easier conversations in Spanish can become, even if you don't know a lot of Spanish words. Now it's your time to practice. So I'm going to give you a situation and then I'm going to pause for a second so you can think of ways of how to say it differently. Remember, we're not aiming for accuracies. That means all answers are correct. However, we want to know how fast are you. So. Vamos a empezar. Hola, ¿puedes ir mañana al cine? Ay, no puedo. Tengo que ir al... So, how would you say veterinarian if you don't know the word in Spanish? You will have a few seconds or just pause this video so you can write down your answer. I would say... Ay, no puedo. Tengo que llevar a mi perro al doctor. As you can see, in this example, I don't even know the word veterinarian, which is veterinario, by the way. But I told my conversation partner that I'm going to take my dog to the doctors. And she didn't even notice that I was missing that word in Spanish. Now, let's go to el siguiente ejercicio. Quiero comprarme un vestido para la boda del sábado. Tiene que ser un vestido fresco, porque será en... So in here, how would you describe the venue instead of saying outdoors or at the park or whatever that you have in mind? Take yourself a few seconds, pause this video and write your answer. Tiene que ser un vestido fresco porque será en un lugar que no es cerrado y por lo tanto hace calor. ¿Te refieres a que será al aire libre? Así es, será al aire libre. Vamos con el siguiente ejercicio and the last one. ¿Cómo te fue en la cita anoche? Pues, aunque no lo creas, muy bien. Era una persona muy... Here you have a blank canvas. So use your imagination to describe a person. Pause this video, take a few seconds to write down your answer. Pues, aunque no lo creas, muy bien. Era una persona muy inteligente. No sé cómo se le dice a alguien que lee mucho o tiene muchos temas que decir. Era una persona intelectual o tal vez interesante. Sí, a eso me refiero. Chunk colored. A eso me refiero. It's a perfect example of a chunk that you can learn by heart and it will help you for paraphrasing and also to keep your conversations flowing. If you and that, that phrase, a eso me refiero, is a good phrase to know as a chunk to use. A eso me refiero, that's what I meant or that's what I mean. Uh, when somebody pauses to give you a word and, you know, you couldn't think of that word, but, oh, yeah, that's what I mean. A eso me refiero. If you would like a list of the most frequent used chunks, then you can download the free Spanish Essentials Chunks Kit that we have on our website. And the link is in the description. So here's your homework for the upcoming week. You're going to practice paraphrasing at least once a week. And how are you going to do that? Write down a sentence in Spanish. You're going to scratch out one of the words and try to say a similar thought without using that word and without thinking it about it too much. Speed is the key here not that important of how or what you're saying the most important is how quickly you can paraphrase in case you need any help to start with I'm gonna leave you five chunks that you can use as an example 
So, one of them is ir de compras, go shopping, una cita, a date, hacer las maletas, to pack, la carnicería, butcher shop, y el dentista, dentist. The more you practice this, the faster you become and the quicker you will sound natural and fluent in Spanish. Okay, a ver. So, what she's talking about with paraphrasing is what I usually just kind of very unscientifically call the workaround. You know, when you don't know a word, you can even ask somebody, como se dice? Como se dice? How do you say when you get stuck on a word? But that reference to just saying, llevar mi perro, llevar a mi perro a, al doctor, taking my dog to the doctor, because you don't say, or maybe you feel uncomfortable pronouncing veterinario. Uh, you know, things like that work just fine. Um, and so that, that workaround of finding a different way to sub in, a, a different way to talk about something or an activity when you don't know a word specifically, something that will help get you over that hump is something that, and actually a lot of us do that in English too. When she said you do this in your own language, we do it quite a lot. When you can't think of somebody's name or you can't think of a street and you know you start to explain, oh, it's that street between these two buildings or whatever. You know, we do this quite a lot in English. So it's a good thing to practice in Spanish. Um, we are going to um, we are going to do some work uh, all together first with talking about interrogatives and making questions, making questions because a lot of our conversation work will revolve around asking each other questions, answer, answering those questions, things that you would do in a normal conversation. You know, that's usually how conversations roll. You tell somebody what you're doing or what you did, you, you know, you ask, or they ask you to clarify something or, or they, uh, uh, you know, you ask them to reply with something similar that they did. So questions are important. And so we want to also review some things about interrogatives. What do you guys remember about interrogatives? Interrogatives are, it's a fancy grammar term. And some of you in the earlier class only had a few of them. Question words like Question. done, done day. Hey, so yes, right, question words, okay. And question words uh, will lead off questions in Spanish. They have to be, they're, they're often, I shouldn't say have to be because there are always exceptions. They are usually the first word that will lead off. It'll usually be a question word and then the verb will be probably pretty closely following after it. So uh, question words are a good thing to review. Uh, we're gonna see if we can make some question words out of some photo prompts after we look at one more video. But this is a great thing for uh, everybody to take a look at again and review a little bit. We're gonna see how those question words, what they are and um, how we blend them into, into sentences. Um, how we use them to ask about other people or other situations. A ver, aquí vamos. Here we go. And then after that, we're going to go into a little, little demo practicing using some question words. So here you might want to, I'm not going to say take copious notes, but just jot down a few things if you need something as a reminder. Some questions that you can ask in Spanish and let's see if you know what they mean. Hola, soy Brenda Romaniello, tu profesora de español. Hoy vamos a ver eh, los pronombres interrogativos. Today, we're going to have a look at the WH questions in Spanish. Número uno. 
¿Qué? Mm. ¿Qué means what? Por ejemplo, ¿qué te gusta? What do you like? Número dos, ¿cómo? ¿Cómo significa how? Por ejemplo, uh, ¿Cómo te gustan los huevos? How do you like your eggs? Número 3. ¿Cuándo? ¿Cuándo significa when? Uh, por ejemplo, ¿cuándo vuelves de viaje? When do you come back from your trip? So this thing of building it into a sentence is what we're going to work on first, okay? So we've got three examples Número there. Número 4. ¿Dónde? ¿Dónde significa when? Por ejemplo, ¿dónde vives? Where do you live? Número 5. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué significa why? ¿Por qué estudias español? Why do you study Spanish? Número 6. ¿Cuál and cuáles? ¿Cuál and cuáles significa which? But there is a difference between cuál and cuáles. Can you have a look at it and maybe think about what could be the difference between these two? They both mean which, so they both mean exactly the same in English. But we are going to change or we're going to use cual and cuales depending on the number, how many people we're talk, uh, how many people or things we're talking about. Uh, cual is going to be singular, only one person or one thing, y cuales will be the plural forms. And I'm going to caution you, cual and cuales are something we'll use later, probably in a separate session, because lots of people mix up que and cual and when we can use them. And they, they are kind of separate issues. So we're going to focus more on que today and less on cual. But you should know that cual is hanging out there. So for two or more, for example, ¿Cuál es tu libro? Which one is your book? ¿Cuáles son tus libros? Which ones are your books? Número 7. ¿Quién and quiénes? ¿Quién and quiénes? Again, we have two different options and in English they mean who. The difference will be, again, if you have only the singular one person, quien, who, and the plural, quienes, will be to refer to two or more people, quienes. Quien es tu mamá? Who is your mom? Quienes son tus amigos? Who are your friends? And the last one we, we're going to talk about today is número ocho. Cuánto, cuánta? ¿Cuántos, cuántas? Muy bien. So here we have four different options. And they basically mean in, in English would be some of them mean how many and some of them mean how much. So the difference between how many and how much, as you know, is that we have uh, how many. We're going to use it with countable nouns, countable things, things that we can counter and measure and how much is just going to be used with uncountable or untangible things when we cannot really count them uh, one after the other. So, cuánto and cuánta would be how much, and we are going to use it with uncountable nouns. Cuánto, we're going to use it uh, with masculine uncountable nouns, and cuánta would be for the feminine uncountable nouns. Por ejemplo, cuánto dinero hay how much money is there? As you can see here, dinero is masculino, so we have to say cuánto dinero. And of course, it's uncountable. Cuánto dinero. Cuánta comida quieres? How much food would you like? In this case, comida es femenino, so we're going to use cuánta. Cuántos y cuántas, we're going to use it with uh, Countable nouns and they mean how many. For example, and of course, again, we're going to have cuantos for the masculino and cuantas for the femenino. For example, cuantos amigos tienes? How many friends do you have? 
¿Cuántas margaritas tomaste anoche? Aquí margaritas es femenino y plural. Ok, so in this case, margaritas will be the feminine, so we have to say cuántas. How many margaritas did you have last night? Siempre es alcohólica. <laughs> Muy bien. Esos son los eh, las pronombres de interrogación en español. Those are the main um, WH question, uh, questions in Spanish. I hope that you enjoy this lesson. Okay. Y eso es. So we're done with that one. A ver. So you see how she used those. And we're going to uh, take an opportunity to work together a little bit, looking at some photos and thinking of how we could work in a question word to ask uh, a who, what, when, where, why with the verbs you see, okay? Uh, so, and, oh, and I'm gonna share one, one extra thing with you. Some of these interrogatives can be combined with other terms. So, por ejemplo, por ejemplo, uh, donde, donde, for where, might become a donde. Uh, because literally you need to be able to say to where. You know, we say, where are you going? Uh, and it is English wise, very grammatically correct to say, where are you going to? But you know, you do hear people saying that, but a donde, sometimes it's a donde, a donde vas, where are you going? Because vas needs that, that uh, to word, which is a, which is the a, and we tag it onto the front of the a donde. Sometimes with this word quien, we might combine other little prepositions like uh, con quien, with whom, because uh, sometimes you're not asking who's talking, but with whom are you talking, right? Or sometimes we combine quien with de quien, uh, because you want to ask whose, uh, you know, to whom something belongs, de quien, of whom, de quien, de quien, de quien es, de quien es este libro, Who, who's, whose book is this, okay? So sometimes we do combine little extra words like a or con or de with those interrogatives. That is a thing that is possible and actually kind of frequent with with a lot of them. One interrogative she did not include is this, which is really similar to the idea of cuando, except that cuando is when, and that might, that's kind of vague. Cuando might refer to a day, a week, a month. You know, it's just when, but it's very, very non-specific, okay? Um, Cuando is very loosey-goosey as to what kind of time period you're referring to. If you're talking about an actual time, you might need a more specific one, which is going to be a phrase. So in a, essentially, this is the chunk that they like to talk about in those videos. And that is a que hora. A que hora. At <coughs> what time. Mm -hmm. And with that kind of interrogative, a que hora, you need an actual time, uh, which we'll be working on with you, you newer folks um, next week, but not this week yet. Um, a que hora, at what time, okay? Uh, and then we're not talking about, you know, the answer for something with a que hora wouldn't really be like Tuesday, because Tuesday is not a time on, on anybody's watch. So uh, that's a little bit extra about interrogativos. Let's take a look and see if we can build some questions you might use with these verbs to ask information, okay? Uh, we're gonna start with some AR verbs that are really common. Uh, muy comunes aquí tenemos hablar, viajar, caminar, escuchar, comprar, llegar. Um, por ejemplo, con quién, with whom, con quién, con quién hablas, who are you talking to? You might 
you might be, you know, doing this thing and your, your uh, spouse or a spouse walks up and they need to have something urgent. There are rats in the house. <laughs> I've got to get your attention fast. Oh my God, we have an infestation. Get off the phone, honey. Con quien hablas? Who are you talking with? Con quien hablas? There is an example of I take hablar and I conjugate it into a form to talk to you or to ask about somebody. But I use it with con quien, con quien hablas bien. Anybody want to try to build a question with any of these other five verbs? Uh, a que, a cuando, a donde, a quien, something. We've got viajar, to travel, caminar, to walk. Que te escucha. Uh, oh, otra vez, again, Juanita. Oh, Juanita, did you have a suggestion? You're, and you have to take yourself off of mute, Juanita. Oh, I think you, have, you had an example with escuchar, right? Yes. Okay. Otra vez. It's a, ¿qué te escuchas? ¿Qué escuchas? ¿Qué escuchas? Oh, can just say, ¿Qué escuchas? In, instead of te. ¿Qué escuchas? What are you listening to? Ah, so you don't have to mention te. You just uh, say escucha. Oh, well now, what are you intending to ask? Let me... Like, what do you listen? If it's what, it'll be que. ¿Qué escuchas? What are you listening to? If it's who are you listening to, then we need a quien ah, escuchas. Okay. Okay. A qui and this is, this is why we're doing this to build and see how different questions are built up. A que escuchas, what are you listening to? Or a quien escuchas, who okay. are you listening to? And with who are you listening to? It's not asking who's listening. Who's listening is quien escucha. You think somebody's listening in on your line. <laughs> You're right, uh, okay. Uh, but a quien, to whom are you listening? Um, because you're listening to a human being, right? Okay, uh, muy bien, muy bien. That's good, es bueno. Uh, algo más, something different. Uh, 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 Patricia, Trish. A donde viajar, viajar. Uh, okay, a donde, and we're going to conjugate viajar. Do you want to ask somebody oh. directly? A, a donde okay. viajas. Yeah. Okay, viajas. Where are you traveling to? A donde viajas, a donde okay. viajas. Where are you traveling to? Perfecto, okay. Magnifico. Anybody want to try something with llegar or comprar? Uh, bueno, uh, Nora. Um, ¿Qué quieres comprar? Ah, ¿qué quieres comprar? What do you want to buy? Muy lógico, muy lógico. Uh, Jan, ¿tienes algo? ¿Por qué compras eso vestido rojo? ¿Por qué compras? ¿Por qué compras? Why are you buying? ¿Por qué compras ese vestido rojo? Muy bien, muy bien. Ok. Ah, uh, uh, bueno, ah, uh, sí, Diana. ¿A dónde ellas caminan? Uh, 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 donde, uh, uh, caminan ellas. And now here's a good thing. When we build these questions, that question word will come first, the verb right after it, and then whoever the subject is, whoever the person is associated with that action will kind of drag further behind somewhere, okay? Mm -hmm. It's flexible. It's kind of flexible depending on the other elements you have in the question. But, uh, you know, donde, cam donde caminan ellas? Where are, do they walk, right? Donde camina mm -hmm. or a donde? Where are they walking to? If you want to talk about their destination. Uh, donde caminan ellas? Where do they walk? Ah, ellas caminan en el parque. They walk in the park, you know. Mm -hmm. Caminan en la calle. They're walking in the street. I see, like that, okay. And um, the famous, how do you get to a place? Como llego a? Como llego a? How do I get to? I'm gonna build that one with llegar. Como llego a? How do I get to a place? So when you wanna go, uh, when you don't know where to go, whether you're lost or you just can't figure out a route, 
you're traveling and you say, how do I get somewhere? It's como llego a, como llego a, como llego al, um, a la oficina, como llego al museo de arte, como llego a, al centro de la ciudad, how do I get to the city center? Okay, so those are all sample questions. Tres más, three more. We've got usar, we've got bailar, bailar might not be the best one for this one, but oh, pagar is a good one. Um, that how much thing works really, really well with pagar. Yes. Um, yeah, if anybody wants to try the pagar one, let me know. That's going to be a how much kind of question. How would we build a question with pagar? Uh, Diana? Como pago uh, un dólar o pesos? Okay, Com, como pago, oh, okay, uh, how do I pay with? And, and the question, the question is gonna be usually more like this. Um, I'll show you. Um, often now, when you are paying up at like, let's say a restaurant bill, or even in a, um, even in a shopping center, uh, you know, people ask if you're going to pay with cash or with credit, right? So generally, the word with is going to be como, como paga, como vas a pagar, how are you going to pay, como quieres pagar, how do you want to pay, como paga, como paga usted, como paga usted, con efectivo o con tarjeta, with cash or with a card, and they don't really care if that card is a debit or a credit, they'll just ask tarjeta, or they might ask debito, or they might ask tarjeta de crédito, you know, but como paga usted, or, oh, por ejemplo, um, cuánto, cuánto pagas por, por, por ese, ese celular, how much are you paying for this cell phone? Cuanto? How much are you paying? Um, anybody want to try usar? Bailar probably isn't going to lend itself all that well. Well, we might say, ¿Con quién bailas? Who are you dancing with? <laughs> Just ask a question. Could you review one more time? I explained in the video a countable amount versus an intangible amount. Yeah. Could you, you know, more time? Sí, sí. It is uh, for, for me now. In, in Spanish, they have the idea of uncountable. Like if I have a bag of rice, right. I'm not going to count out every grain of rice. <laughs> and that's what they term as uncountable um, versus like a specific amount. Right. Uh, okay, so that's what they mean. And, and I think really for the English speaker, the native English speaker, it is better expressed this way instead of that countable versus uncountable. Uh, it would be more like cuanto is how much. When you mean how much, it's cuanto. Or it might be the feminine form, cuanta. Uh, cuanto or cuanta. When you wanna say how many, meaning that's uh, what they mean by count, oh, like how many. Uh, how many how many shirts are you buying then you need that plural form the how many needs the plural form of cuantos or cuantas okay cuantos okay. or cuantas and i think that is an easier way for uh, uh, those of us who speak in english to understand those two okay. words cuantos okay. is asking for uh one two three you count them up yeah um and cuanto is how much, cuanto might be very vague. So cuanto, uh, uh, you know, like how much, uh, mm, ooh, uh, cuanto, cuanto pagaste, how much did you pay? Ah, pagué mucho, I paid a lot. A lot is vague. So that's what they mean by uncountable. I paid just a little, I paid a lot. Uh, that's what they mean by vague. But really cuanto or cuanta, think of it as how 
much. Okay, thank versus, you. Versus cuantos, cuantas, how many. Okay. Uh, por ejemplo, ah, oh, okay. okay. Voy a usarlo. I'm going to use it. ¿Cuántas computadoras usas en tu casa? How many computers do you use in your house? ¿Cuántas computadoras usas en tu mm -hmm. casa? En, en mi casa, porque hay cuatro personas, usamos uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Siete u ocho, siete u ocho, siete u ocho computadoras. Mi esposo usa por lo menos cuatro computadoras. <laughs> por, por su trabajo, you know, on account of his work. Ok, pero yo uso una computadora. Mi hija usa solamente una computadora. Mi hijo usa solamente una computadora. Es eso. Uh, son ejemplos. Those are examples. Let's take a look at some ER verbs uh, and see if we can build some questions using comer or leer or comprender or vender or respond, uh, responder, maybe not, uh, or beber. Any questions we can build with these with a question word? Oh. You may need a moment to think. The who, what, when, where, why. Uh, K, K, um, uh, vino, bebe. Ah, uh, que, muy bien. Que vino, bebe. What wine are you drinking? Yeah, mm -hmm. what kind? Maybe you want to know the type, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, que, que vino. Bebe, uh, cuánto vino, bebe, oh, <laughs> right, oh. right. There, there's an indefinite Jan. Cuánto vino, cuánto vino, bebe. <laughs> How much wine are you drinking? Ah, mucho, <laughs> muchos vasos, many glasses, muchas copas, many, many glasses. Okay, bien, fantástico. Uh, uh, um AK, so if you wanted to say uh, happy hour, so we had AK. Aura, right? Which is at what time? Oh. Is there is there a happy hour for Bebe or oh. for Bebe? Qué buena pregunta. Happy hour. Uh, <laughs> Fiesta aura. Aura. <laughs> <laughs> Creo que es algo difícil de traducir. I think that's a little bit difficult to translate. But actually, this is a good cultural question. In a way, see. It could be la, la merienda is a snack time, but better um, ir de tapas, ir, ir de, de tapas, ir de tapas, ir de tapas. Boy, can I include it in here? Will it, oh, it will not let me write in this box. Uh, ir de tapas, to go tapas hopping, like bar hopping. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, tapas is a custom. Uh, in in most Spanish speaking countries, uh, it, it is that kind of low time really before dinner because dinner starts at the very earliest, generally 8 p.m. That is the earliest. Anytime from 8 to 10 o'clock p.m. is when people start the dinner hour. So let's say you've got that low time, you get off of work, say six o'clock, that lag time in between from six till eight will be the time to go ir de tapas. That's the closest they would have to happy hour. Ir de tapas means you go out, generally not just to one bar, but to a few. It could be the one, but a lot of people go to several ones for a reason. You go out, you have a drink, and you get very small, like hors d'oeuvre sized portions of various kind of, well, hors d'oeuvres, right? Uh, and those are the tapas. Tapas are kind of their version of hors d'oeuvres. They can be as simple as aceitunas, olives that are stuffed. They can be elaborate as little croquette things or uh, little uh, uh, slices of meat or jamón or uh, pescado fish on little uh, 
Red croquettes, yeah. <laughs> so they, they go from very simple to very elaborate. And they are the little snacks you eat with your drink. And people may go to several of those bars because certain bars have like a type of tapa, a type of hors d'oeuvre they specialize in. So people go and sample the different kind of hors d'oeuvres that are in different places. That's a be their best equivalent to happy hour, which is a um, happier happy hour because you get food with it. You know, it's never like go out to get drunk kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> just drinking for drinking's sake. Uh, it's time to relax with your friends after work with something to eat, a bite to eat and a drink. Um, que buena pregunta. Okay. Uh, I must, any other uh, question words we might combine with any of these verbs? Algo, Mariana. Uh, que quieres comer hoy? Que quieres comer? What do you want to eat? ¿Qué quieres? Or, ¿qué comes? What are you eating? ¿Qué comes? Sí, exacto. Muy come? bien. Muy bien. Muy lógico. Ok. Um, ¿Qué lees? What are you reading? Right. Uh, a ver. Ah, ¿dónde vives? Where do you live? Right. Uh, cosas así. Things like that. So, ok. A ver. I'm going to take those down for a moment. Uh, that is a little bit of how we build questions. Um, and, okay, we're going to take that a step further. Uh, I am going to have a, I, I, this is where I, I nicely and logically segregate you in a nice way. Uh, I am going to segregate out the folks who are coming in from the step one class because we're going to have a little separate lesson. But those of you who are kind of veterans of this group, uh, I'm gonna have some conversations, so uh, questions. So I would like you to jot these down. And uh, the rest of you just hold tight for maybe three minutes, tres minutos, aquí vamos, here we go. And I will actually, uh, let's see if that link will copy as well. Here's some questions I want you guys to talk about in your smaller groups, those of you. And this is only for people who have been in the step two group before. People who are coming in from the step one group, I'm gonna take you out for a separate thing. They're gonna go off and do this in a breakout room. Uh, uh, so you're not doing these questions, the newbie folks. Uh, aquí, aquí, te, aquí tienen ustedes las preguntas. Here are things and they're conversational. ¿Qué acabas de hacer la semana pasada? What did you just do last week? Because we didn't see each other last week, right? ¿Qué acabas de hacer? What did you just do? What did you finish up? ¿Qué acabas de hacer la semana pasada? ¿Qué quiere hacer la próxima semana? What do you want to do next week? So you're going to go off into your chat rooms and talk about what you did recently and what you are going to do. You're going to be talking about the recent, recent past and about near future, right? ¿Qué quiere hacer? What do you want to do? Uh, we're going to have, because this is one of my favorites, ¿Qué no quiere hacer? What do you not want to do? <laughs> you know, there's something you have to get done, but you really don't want to do it. ¿Qué no quiere hacer la próxima semana? What do you not want to do, right? Hunt for roof rats. That's what you do not want to have to do. Okay. Uh, ¿Qué tienes que practicar más en la clase de español? What do you have to practice more in Spanish class? Ah, okay. A ver. Uh, ¿Qué tienes que practicar más en la clase de español? So we have recent past, número uno. Uh, what do you want to do? Kind of in the present. ¿Qué quiere hacer? We've got numero tres, uh, um, uh, uh, what do you not want to do? Cuatro, what do you have to? It's an obligation question. Tienes que practicar, tienes que practicar. And y por fin, por fin, because this is gonna be kind of a long breakout. It's probably gonna be about 10 minutes. Que puedes hacer solo or sola? What can you do by yourself? Or maybe you want to flip that question around to what 
can't you do by yourself? Que no puedes hacer. You know, maybe you cannot wash all the windows yourself because they're on a second or third floor. Maybe, yeah, maybe there are other cho chores you can do on your own, chores you cannot do on your own. Es lógico, ¿no? And I want you to have like a kind of a nice conversation where you just work all those ideas in and it's pretty wide open. Okay. Uh, do you need a, uh, necesitan unos, unos minutos. Do you need another couple minutes to copy those down? Yes. Sí. Okay. Bien. And I am going to try to uh, put the link in if any of you are facile enough with pulling up two windows. While you guys are working on that, I'm going to take the uh, newer folks aside, and we're going to do a lesson on the verb ir, ir, to go. We're going to introduce that verb because this is a verb that you'll be using a lot in reading. We'll be using it a lot in conversation. It is easy. It is irregular, but easy to learn. Okay. And we're going to go off and do that while they're doing a uh, practice session with these conversational questions. Uh, can I take this share screen off or do I need to leave that up a little bit longer? A mm, little bit. Bien, are we good? See? Si? See. Si. Okay, okay, bien. Magnifico, I'm gonna take that off of share screen. Um, and I'm gonna put the link in there, if you, uh, you know, like to split off into two screens and you would prefer to do that, that link should get in into, uh, get you into those conversational questions. And, uh, ooh, okay, now we're going to have an ear lesson and I'm going to create my breakout rooms and I think I only need two breakout rooms. Wow, this is kind of unusual because generally... Um, boop, 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 boop. Okay, I'm going to take all the veteran folk and uh, put you off together to do conversation questions. Uh, and uh, Nora, side, side note, Nora, I'm going to have three Noras eventually, Noras or Noreens. So this is going to become very, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're used to probably being the only one all the time, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I know that feeling. I often feel that way myself. Okay. I'm going to hope I've got everybody suctioned off the right way. I'm eyeballing this again. Uh, bien. Okay. Uh, I'm going to send some of you off to do those conversational questions right now. So hit your join button. The rest of you are going to stay with me. And you'll have to hit the join button, folks. And the rest of you are unassigned because you don't need an assignment. Okay. Oh, wait, Jeffrey, you should. That, there we go. I want to make sure it goes off. Okay. And Linda, I kept you in here. Uh, okay. So uh, you folks that are coming in, bienvenidos, bienvenidas, welcome in. Uh, we're going to take a look at a special verb, which is super, super important for a couple of things. And you're going to get uh, like separate kind of homework on this, but it won't be hard to learn. It's just one new concept to learn. And that is going to be the verb ir. Ir es importante. Ir is an important verb. And part of your homework will be, I'm going to send you off with a video that is going to show you how it is used. It is used for two things. Ir means to go. And ir is uh, used to talk about physically going somewhere. Yay. So we use it to talk about going to a place or an event, but the second use is we use it to talk about the future. Instead of going to a place, what you're going to do, yay. So without having like a fancy future tense like shall or will, people use this all the time conversationally to talk about what they're going to do. 
Okay, so I'm going to show you the forms of ir. And I'm going to show you where you can find it in your book, in el libro. And I'll put this all in the email para que sepan, just so you know. But it is in chapter eight. Creo está en ocho. I think it's an eight. Oh, quizás no, maybe not. Perdón. No, no. Me equivoco. I am wrong. Está en el capítulo nueve. In your old book, it's in chapter nine. So I'm gonna make sure I send you the audio links for chapter nine, yeah. Uh, uh, you're gonna find that verb ir in there. So check out the examples with ir there uh, later on this week. And I'm gonna share with you now how we conjugate ir because you learned that when we conjugate a verb, we take off the ER, we take off the IR, we take, you know, and then, but if you take off the IR from ER, you got nothing left. So yeah, you got a whole lot of nothing. Yeah, so it is just your regular. ER means to go, okay? Uh, and we can use it to indicate going to a place or to indicate future activity as in going to work. I'm going to work, I'm going to play, I'm going to clean, I'm going to eat, you know, whatever it is you're going to do. Aquí, muy fácil. All the forms of ir start with be chica, they all start with a B. Uh, boy, boy, I'm going. For example, voy al supermercado. I'm going to the supermarket, right? And you're going to get this. I'll send you the link to this. So, you know, you don't even have to write these down. Boy. And it'll sound like boy in English, except not a really, really hard B, right? That B sounds like a B, 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 like a B, okay? Uh, repitan, por favor. Boy. 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 And boy is usually boy. used without that word yo, usually because we automatically know the only boy. person it can match up with is yo. So why bother to say yo? And the tu form is bas. 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 Okay. And the form for el and ella and usted, all three of those ideas of a single person share that verb, right? They share ba. 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 So, ba. Singular, yeah. singular, boy, bass, bas, ba. boy, boy, bas, bas, ba. ba. But notice how, you know, you had soy, that O-Y. Yeah, we always know that's a yo kind of verb. Uh, a, a, s, s, an S sound at the end is always a tu verb, mm. right? And bas, uh, ba. boy, bas, ba. ba. And boy, now we've got uh, plural. We've got we. Vamos. 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 Vamos is muy importante. Vamos is really the, uh, probably vamos. the most important <laughs> word vamos. on this group because a lot of times vamos is used all by itself. Vamos. vamos. Let's go. Vamos. Vamos. Let's go. Yeah. So vamos is used all by itself in addition to <coughs> any other normal uses. Vosotros, we don't worry too much about, except for those of you who might go to Spain, vice, right? The plural of tú. But the next one is important. And again, like all the other third person plurals, it ends in a nut, 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 and end the sound. Ban. 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 And not, not van. Ban. 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 You gotta have that ah sound, right? Ban. And, and oddly, Ir, even though it's an IR verb, uses lots of ah, ah, ah sounds, which doesn't sound very IR verb like, but boy, bas, ba, ah. bam, vamos, ban, ban. Okay. So ban. here's a little thing you need to remember about this verb ir. Boy, Memorizing casa. those is not too hard, but you're going to need this little word ah to follow this. Because ah, in this case, is going to mean to. So when we name the place we're going to, we need that word ah after the form of ir. Voy a casa. Voy a casa. I'm going home. We need that little ah, the to word, because it indicates when you're speaking, somebody expect, unless they hear you just saying vamos, 
which means let's go. <laughs> it can mean let's go. Uh, they're expecting to hear that ah, because they think the ah is going to roll into the place you're, that person's going. So when you speak using this, they expect to hear that word ah afterwards. Okay. And then the location, the physical location. Boy, a casa. Here we combine it. We hooked it up with that question word. A donde? To where? A donde vas? Where are you going? Where are you going to? To where are you going? Yeah, that's what that is. A donde vas? A donde vas? Uh, Va usted a un restaurante? Are you going to a restaurant? Okay. Uh, so that little word a ah, is importante. That's important because it is now prepping the person you're talking to for here comes a location after the word a. Ah. Okay. Um, you really need to use the a. Ah. It's going to lead into the place. Here are some more examples. Hay más ejemplos. Vamos a la farmacia. We're going to the pharmacy, drugstore. Vamos a la farmacia. Van ustedes al metro. Are you guys going to the subway? Okay. Todos van al museo. They're all going to the museum. And, and sometimes it's an al, right? A and el is what happens when you have a and el next to each other. Al. A and el can't stand separately. They squash together, right? A la farmacia. I can't make a squash together contraction out of a and la. They stay separate words. Vamos a la farmacia. A la stays separate. But a and el combine to go into al. Just remember that. Van uh, ustedes al metro. Todos van al museo. Because we don't say a el. Al. But we do say a la and keep them separate words. It makes sense to see. Sí, es lógico. Mm -hmm. That logical. See? Sí? Yeah. In, okay, mm. vale, bueno. Uh, a la is separate, a las is separate, a los is separate, but a and el, <laughs> they, they become the trash compact kind of little word al. So, voy a los parques, I'm going to the parks, more than one, parks. Voy a la oficina del médico, I'm going to the doctor's office. Vamos a las tiendas, I'm going to the stores, but Anita va al consultorio. Consultorio is just a fancier word for oficina. It's a consulting room because that's what a doctor or a lawyer uses. Consultorio is used for doctors and lawyers and people, probably your, your accountant. If you have an accountant, right? Um, a professional office is often upgraded from oficina to the word consultorio. Anita va al consultorio del médico, okay? So that shows you how al is formed because of a and el. Bien? Are we good with that? Uh, hay una pregunta, any questions so far? Si o no? No? And this is going to become really, really super important, this verb ir, because you are going to wind up seeing the word ir a lot in the, the book that we're gonna read during this session. So ir is gonna be important. And really for speaking, uh, here, comes, here comes the second use, not talking about a location, but talking about what you're going to do. When we use ir to talk about a future event, usually in near future, and this is conversationally all the time, uh, we still need that little word, ah, even though we don't have a physical yeah. place we're talking Vamos about. A escuchar. Yeah, yeah. the verb ir always walks along with this little preposition, ah. So, ir to indicate the future, okay? Someone is going to do something. You still have to use an ah, and the ah will come in between the form of ir, then we get the word a, ah, and then we get a second verb. And the second verb does not get conjugated. It stays as an infinitive. The second verb tells what it is somebody's going to do, what it is that you're going to do. We have the same kind of structure in English, 
we say, I'm going to eat. We don't say, I'm going, I eat. We say, I'm going to eat. So just like we use to eat an infinitive, they might, might use comer to eat. But even though comer means to eat, that verb ir needs that little word a ah, in between itself and that second verb. It just does. It does not translate to really mean anything at all in this situation. Ir just needs that word a. Ah. It must march along with it. Uh, we're going to listen. Vamos a escuchar. Vamos a escuchar. Uh, they're going to take a taxi. Ellos van a tomar un taxi. Van a tomar un taxi. Uh, my friend is going to pay. Mi amigo va a pagar. And when you have va and a next to each other, it's just going to sound like I'm dragging out the a sound longer. Okay? They won't be said as separate words. They're going to sound like they run together. Mi amigo va a pagar. Va a pagar. Okay? Bien? Does that make sense to you? Sí? Sí. Uh, vamos, a, vamos a hablar. Vamos a caminar. Uh, vamos, a escribir, vamos a escribir. Right? Vamos uh, a leer. Voy, voy a estudiar. I'm going to study. All of those things use ir, a, uh, and a second infinitive. Okay? So and what you I'm going have, you could have vamos a ir. I am going. You could have vamos a ir. Sí, Larry. Sí, vamos a ir mañana. We're gonna go tomorrow. Exacto. You can repeat it just like we do. We're going to go. We do the same thing. So the thing that's not the same as English is we need that little word ah. English doesn't have something like that. Okay, we need that little word a ah, when we use this verb ir. We need it when we talk about a second, uh, like, you know, what you're going to do, the, the second verb. We need it when we talk about a place. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about a physical place or an action you're going to do. Ir needs that little word a. Ah. It just does. That is the lead off into the next part of your sentence, whatever it is. You're going to have a really nice video that's going to show you how we use ir, both for going to a place and for talking about future events. So that's going to be part of your, your homework. It'll be an easy thing, I think, for you to slip into. I don't think it's going to be particularly tough. Tienen preguntas? Do you have some questions? And I'm going to send you... Um, Actually, a little extra homework to see, can you conjugate it? We'll check your answers next week. See? Okay. I, I preguntas. Are, are there any questions? Sí. No. No, no gracias. Nada. Es lógico? Es lógico? Es logical? Sí. Makes sense? Okay. Well. Vale. Magnifico. Okay. That is a, a good little primer. And the, the video, or if I find a second one that's also good, I might include too. They'll, they'll give you lots of examples. So you'll see examples and examples. And you'll be able to even, you'll be able to start using it next week. You absolutely will. Uh, it will not be hard. No va a ser muy difícil. Uh, okay. That is about, oh, it's a little over 10 minutes, but those folks had a lot of questions to work on. So um, I'll be giving you a worksheet on that and a couple of videos that's gonna help you seg into that very, very easily. We're gonna call the rest of the folks back. They'll get a minute to uh, they'll get a minute to wrap up and come on back and then we're going to um, introduce the idea of something to read and come back to any other practice that we've got. Eso es perfecto, that's gonna be about perfect. Wow, for once I planned Logically, sometimes I plan 
too much and I don't fit everything in. <laughs> there, are about, there are about two other verbs we're gonna teach you that are irregular, that we're gonna fit in, that the other people in the group already know these verbs, but we'll teach them to you, one, but one verb each week, not a whole bunch each week. Okay, so uh, that will make sense. And they've got, okay, aquí vienen. Here comes everybody. Aquí vienen. Muy bien, muy bien. Tienen preguntas. You need to take yourselves off of, off of mute. Hay uh, preguntas. Are there any questions that you came up with in the process of, of practicing those little mini conversations? The rest of you guys who were off in breakout? No, no hay nada. Okay, bien. Uh, did I give you enough time or too much? <laughs> enough, to, enough time to chat too. Okay, that's good. Okay, <laughs> es es. We got to have a little of that in our lives too. That's good. Es bueno. Okay, muy bien. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about books, 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 libros, libros. There are two books and I will send you, uh, actually, I think I, ooh, for some of you, I sent the links and Tomas, you're the only one that it might be different. And Tomas, I'm going to let you decide whatever you want. Cause I know you, I think you've read both of these. So you, you don't want right. to. Read the right. One. You gave me a suggestion and I've got, it'll be here tomorrow. So oh. I'm all set. Thanks. Magnifico. Okay. So uh, you don't need these immediately this week, but those of you who are new to the group, because I think the rest of you have gotten this book and actually it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I will send you what this looks like. It's called El Escape Cubano. This may not photograph all that well on my camera. I don't know. El Escape Cubano, Cuban Escape. And uh, it is a wonderful book because in the back of the book is a mini dictionary. Mm. So all you people coming from step one, this is super, super great. And there might be even a few of you in this group, even though you're not from step one, if you did not read this book yet, vale la pena, it is worth it. So Jan, por ejemplo, Jan, I'm pretty sure you did not see this book. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not even Trish. Uh, so you've got your choice of which book you want to purchase is what I'm telling you, because some people have read this. Uh, like uh, Diana, D Diana, I know you've read this. Uh, no. Juanita, oh, no, you haven't. Have it. You no. have it. Okay, well, let's talk about this. Okay, El Escape Cubano would be my first choice. Uh, if you have read it already, if you were in a group where we read it, then, you know, uh, definitely don't rebuy this. But uh, they cost around $7. Cuesta, oh, cuesta, cuesta, cuesta siete dólares. Uh, there are a couple of sources. Amazon is not necessarily the best source. Amazon, for some reason, will sometimes tell you that the book this size costs 20 some dollars. I have sometimes seen it listed for $40. Would you pay $40 for this? I would not. Yo no. I certainly would not. Uh, it is not worth the $40. Why it comes up like that in Amazon, I don't know. I will Discover. give you some sites. I will give you different sites you can go to to purchase the book and get it wherever you can get it cheapest. And you don't have to have it immediately next week. Uh, but I would say within the next uh, week and a half or so, you want to order it. You suggested the uh, Pobre Ana last time, right? This one, yes. I got this pobre, one, uh, pobre And Pobre Ana. Ana, Pobre Ana also works. Pobre Ana. Uh, is the other one, pobre Ana, means poor Ana. And it talks about a poor girl who really feels that her family is a con absolute pain in the neck. Okay, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of more teen oriented, but that's okay. Um, so all of these, both of these books have a, a glossary built into the back. And the reason for that is that um, you want to be able to look up things quickly and get back into your reading. So the logic behind using these books is that in your native language, your first language, you learned 70% of the vocabulary you have now from reading from third grade up. All the vocabulary you get your whole life, 70% of what your vocabulary you get in your first language is obtained from reading, hmm. not from just conversation, from reading in school, 
in newspapers in life. That is the way we progress with vocabulary. Uh, I'm not saying don't continue to do use Duolingo. If you're still using Duolingo, it's a great thing to do because that builds vocabulary very quickly. But the logic behind using a book is that uh, you build vocabulary. It does a lot of repetition. You will feel like it's repeating this word a lot. It's doing that to make sure you see that word enough times to remember it so mm -hmm. that it becomes a natural, it just comes into your head. You internalize it rather than memorizing it. We have to see a new word, the average person about 50 times until we internalize it to the point where we recognize it and can use it independently. Okay. Memorizing is not the same as internalizing. No. Right. You so. memorize something, it fades from the memory quickly. So we learn a lot of words from the repetition in the text, and it's meant to be repetitive. Uh, when you come to a new word in the text, you can quickly look it up because you're not going to a big fat dictionary. You quick look it up, you quick get back, you do not lose your train of thought. Mm -hmm. So that is the beauty to these little books. They are simple. I'm not saying you're going to have war and peace, crime and punishment, even Outlander. You're not going to have a book like that. It's not that detailed, right? They, they are simple stories designed to get you into patterns of words that are frequently used. And you're going to see some chunks of words um, where you have to think hard and you may say, I don't know that word. They used the word le, and I don't know, but you're going to think of it not as le, but as le with the word next to it, like le dice. Okay, so uh, they're very, very helpful books. Again, I'll send you the links on how, uh, where you can generally buy them from cheaper and, you know, wherever works. Uh, if you've read both of those books and you need a different, um, and you need a different suggestion than the two I've shown you, then tell me. Tomas, I knew was going to be in that group, but uh, what we're generally going to do is I will tell you to just read a particular chapter, and I want you to absolutely actively, you know, mark things up when you go through these, and mark them up, and maybe even I will suggest. When you come to groups of words um, that don't make sense to you, uh, you know, underline them as a whole sentence or as I don't understand when they keep using this phrase, le dice, you know, maybe um, circle that. And basically you'll, come, you'll do a little reading and you'll come back and say, I don't understand why they use this phrase or I don't understand why they use this word. And we'll do a little short explanation, super short, on any questions you have from reading. We won't go in depth into every single event from the story because they're not that deep on event. It's not like analyzing things for English class in ninth, 10th, 12th grade. It's not like that. It's reading for understanding a simple story. Okay, is that game? Are we good with that? So choose whichever one you want. Uh, teenage girls, every, my parents hate me. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, this is a little more harrowing story, really. Um, and based on a true story of some people, uh, you know, the boat people who came out from Cuba in the 80s, not the original wave after Castro, but the, the subsequent 1980s into 1990s waves of boat people that came out uh, to the Americas and why these things happened. Okay. Yeah. Bueno, okay. Uh, a ver. Uh, I, oh, magnifico. 15 minutos. Es perfecto. That's pretty perfect. Um, I've got some things 
Uh, we're going to do a little reading, but it's a separate reading. Uh, it's not in any book. I'll send it to you. For some of you, it may be uh, kind of on the tougher side, but uh, you know, that's okay. Uh, for others of you, it might not be that difficult. Oh, I'm trying to get my page to refresh. And actually, I'm going to uh, probably send this out in a couple of ways for those of you who feel like you can tackle some of the, the uh, reading, because it is uh, a little bit better when you can actually see the pictures, although I've got it separated into an easier to read version. Pero sin las fotos, without the photos. Y, eh, oh, y, ah, el artículo dice, el artículo, so we're going to have a little listening, uh, práctica de escucha. Uh, las diez pinturas más famosas del mundo. Las diez pinturas más famosas del mundo. Hmm, en inglés, ¿cómo se dice? How would we say this in English? The most, the most famous, famous 10 pictures in the world? The 10 most ten famous, pictures. the 10 mm. most famous paintings. paintings we might say world. pictures, we might. Mm -hmm. So here's again, you know, you don't know the exact word. Cuadro would mean a picture. Uh, pinturas would mean a painting, right? Any of those refer to a work of art. Ooh, obra de arte, works of art. Obra de arte, a work of art. So there are many different things. That thing she talked to you about in the video about paraphrasing when we let off the, our class today. There are many different references or terms we use to talk about art. Las diez pinturas más famosas del mundo. Okay, ah, primero, Mona Lisa, claro, Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa es la pintura número uno, ok. Uh, artista Leonardo da Vinci, claro. Ah, fecha estimada. Estimated date of creation. Well, actually, I think he was still painting on this up to the day he died, almost literally. So, mm. mil, ooh, numeros, numbers. Como se dice 1503? You can't say it as 15 and 03. French can do that. Spanish cannot. We have to say it as 1,500. Como se dice? Mil cinco. Mil? Mil cinco. And you think it should be cinco, but it's not. It's the mm. funny, funny word that sounds like a key to a door. Mil quinientos. 500 1503 a where to see it donde ah oh, here's an interrogative donde verlo where to see it the law just means it the painting Donde verlo? Museo de Louvre, ah, Paris. Ah, número yeah. dos, La Última Cena, the? Last yeah. Supper. Last Supper. Oh, mire, miren los celulares. Look at the cell phones. Mm. Miren los celulares. Uh, ah, también de Leonardo da Vinci. Ah, fecha estimada. ¿Cómo se dice? 1495. Mil cuatro cientos noventa y cinco a mil cuatrocientos noventa y ocho. Y dónde verlo, dónde verlo, Santa María de la Grazie, Milán, Italia. Italia. Oh, está en Italia. La primera pintura 
está en París. Sí. La primera, the, the first one. First, sí, la primera pintura está en París. La segunda pintura está en Italia. Italia. Está en Italia. A la noche estrellada. Starry night. Starry night. Mm -hmm. Ah, starry night. Ah, artista. El artista es Vincent Van Gogh. Van Gogh. ¿Cómo se pronuncia? No sé. Ah, uh, fecha. ¿Cómo se dice? 1889. Mil, mil, mil ochocientos, ochocientos, ochenta y nueve, ochenta y nueve. Y dónde verlo, dónde verlo, where to see, el Museo de Arte Moderno en no, Nueva no, York. York. La pintura, I'm going to talk about location, la pintura está en un museo en Nueva York. Bien. Museo de Arte Moderno. MoMA se dice en inglés. MoMA. Uh -huh. MoMA, ¿verdad? MoMA. Uh, Museum of uh, Modern Art. Arte de, uh, Museo de Arte Moderno. Ah, el grito. El grito. The scream. The scream. The scream. Yeah. Ah, the scream. Eh, sí, artista Edward Munch. Munch se pronuncia Munch? Munch Munch. Mm -hmm. ¿Cómo se pronuncia? ¿Cómo se pronuncia? How do you pronounce el apellido? Munch? Munch. 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 Okay. Ah, fecha, the date. Mil ochocientos. Mil ochocientos. Tres. 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 Ah, bien. Ah, ¿dónde verlo? Where to see it? ¿Dónde verlo? Museo Nacional Norway. en Noruega. Nor Noruega. En Oslo, eh, Noruega. Uh, y Museo a uh, Munch, Oslo. Oh, hasta mayo. Ok. Uh, so, I guess it was our... Oh, Guernica. Guernica. Picasso. Picasso. Es enorme. If you have ever seen yeah. this in real life, es enorme. Es. Mucho uh, enorme. I did not expect to be wowed by this. I'm not a Picasso person. I was wowed by this and I did not expect to be because mm -hmm. I thought uh, black, white, and gray, come on, really, you know, the abstract thing. It really was impressive. This painting supposedly, according to legend, was done in one day. I do not know if that is really true. Mm -hmm. um, Uh, it was done as a reaction to the bombing of this town in northern Spain during the Spanish Civil War, and he had such a. And actually, he was born in the uh, in the northern part of Spain mm -hmm. himself, so he was quite incensed by the bombing of a civilian village, uh, and was apparently so moved that he just went to work, and got this done. Ah, el artista es Pablo Picasso. Ah, fecha. 1937. Mil. Mil. Nueva. Nueva. Nueve. 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 Museo Reina Sofía. Nueve. 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 Uh, it is totally a, a modern art museum in Madrid. Uh, no old stuff there, only newer stuff from 1900s and up. Okay. Ah, el beso. El beso. Oh, yes. 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 El beso. El beso. El beso. Bien. El artista Bien. es Gustav Klimt. Uh, Klimt es muy famoso. Klimt es un arti una de la, uh, los artistas favoritos de, de mi hija. My, my daughter had to do lots of study on this, this painting. Uh, Gustav Klimt, fecha estimada. ¿Cómo se dice? 1907. Mil. Mil. Siete. A mil novecientos ¿Dónde verlo? La pintura está en Viena, Austria. 
la pintura está en un museo de Viena, Austria. Ok, a uh, ver. Pregunta, Marilyn. Sí, 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 dime. Uh, when you have the years like 1907, do you ever say I siete? Buena pregunta. Uh, uh, 1907, there is no I there. 1908, there is no E there. Let's see places where we do have an E. As well, ah, right up here. 1937. 37. So we look at that last combination. You would normally say the last two digits as 37, right? But if you look at this, you would say these last two digits as zero, zero e. so no, so yeah, just zero. siete or just ocho. Yeah. Therefore, no yeah. word e. Siete. Ah, qué buena pregunta, Nora. What a good question. We had another one. Oh, ah, noventa y tres. So you'll have an e. Okay. Ah, uh, ochenta y nueve. So you will have an e. But ah. Uh, Up here, just tres. Yes. So it's just tres. <laughs> okay, no word E in there for 1503. Okay, es buena pregunta. That's a good, good question. Uh, bueno, vamos a ver, vamos a ver, vamos a ver. El beso, el beso, el beso. Oh, la joven de la perla. With la pearl joven earring. de la perla, pearl the, the girl with the pearl mm -hmm. earring, yeah. and notice in English we t we title this the girl with the pearl earring. Oh. Here they don't call her a girl because she's a young woman. La joven, joven la joven de, de la, la perla. perla, the girl with the pearl, the young perla. woman with the pearl is what they call. It. Ah, Johann Vermeer. Ah, mm -hmm. ooh, ¿cuál es la fecha? ¿Cómo se dice? 1665. Five. Mil sesenta. Mil sesenta. Sesenta y cinco. Y cinco. Donde verlo. Oh, Países Bajos would be the lower country. So that would mean Holland, Dutch. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, La Haya. Hague? Hague? Es Hague? Creo que sí. Uh, ah, ah, gracias, gracias. Okay. Uh, oh, the birth of Venus. Birth of Venus. Oh, oh, sí, 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 sí. El nacimiento de Venus. Um, o oh, Venus, sí. El nacimiento, the birth of Venus. Ah, Sandro Botticelli. Sandro Botticelli. Ah, ¿cuál es la fecha? What's the date here? Mil cuarenta. Mil. Cuarenta. Cuatro. 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 Ah, uh, y hay dos más. Uh, ah, me encanta. I love this one. Okay. Las meninas. Las meninas means the ladies in waiting. Uh -huh. The ladies. Las there's meninas. not. There's one word for it in Spanish. Las meninas. And las meninas really refers to this person, this person, this person, this person, even this little doggy, and these people <laughs> here. Uh, that that is really what las meninas means. And the person in the center of this, however, is the actual little princess who was the formal subject of the painting. And here is the painter himself, mm. Velázquez. Here, back reflected in the photo, is the mother and father of this little girl, La Infanta Margarita. Uh, okay, Las Meninas, artista Diego Velázquez. Diego Velázquez. Uh, la fecha, mil seiscientos cincuenta y seis. We need an E. 
1656 y donde verlo en el Museo del Prado en Madrid. Uh, it is very hard to get to see this picture. By the way, if you ever go to, uh, which I would uh, very much recommend this museum, you never get to be this one person looking in here. It's more hmm. like you get to see it from <laughs> here up yeah. because the crowds by this painting are oppressive. It is now, uh, you know, the time to go is probably when they, it's probably a month after they lift travel restrictions <laughs> because the first month it's going to be a flood. When you typically go to see this picture, it's very difficult to stand and just see the picture because the crowds are enormous. Mm -hmm. um, uh, y creación, la última pintura, creación de Adán, 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 creación de Adán, Miguel Ángel. Michelangelo, Miguel Ángel. Ángel. Miguel Ángel. Miguel Ángel is a very popular combination of words to use for a name in Spanish, by the way. You know, a double name thing is very popular in Spanish culture. Uh oh, we were going to have a no E. Uh, we're going to have a date. Una fecha sin E. We're, we're going to have a, a date without E. Mil. Quinientos. That word is doce, so we don't need an E. Mm -hmm. Bien, okay. Uh, Capilla Sistina, Ciudad del Vaticano, claro, sí, de Miguel Ángel. Uh, and of course, that's got a very long date because it's the whole ceiling, not just that one piece. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Vale, magnifico. Uh, I will send you a little bit of a reading for those of you who want to do a reading. I'm going to try to make it accessible for everybody. So you may not know every single word, pero vale la pena, it's worth reading. Um, I'm going to try to simplify it a little bit. Uh, para la semana que viene. Sí, bien, ok. Uh, a ver. Uh, y, uh, y nos... Vemos. Nos vemos la semana que viene. We'll see you next week. Are there any burning topics you want me to cover for next week if something is up for any of you? No. No? Nada? Okay. Mar Marilyn, when you review numbers, if you review them for the new people, would you review them for all of them? Uh, I think all maybe that's, personas? you know what, and, <laughs> and this is why we do some of these things, because I do see some things like, you know, we need to go in and maybe uh, do a little more of that. So that's why we do some of these drills, because it kind of shows me, you know, we're a little rusty with some of that. We could mm. use a little bit of practice. Vale la pena. It is worth the effort. Vale la pena. Okay. Muy bien. Uh, and if other things come up, email me in between. Some of you have work to do with ir. Uh, some of you will be uh, getting books. If you're getting books, I would say start reading if you haven't got it yet. Uh, no se preocupe. Do not worry. We're just going to come in fresh. And we, we will do some numbers. So for the rest of you who are not working on ir, uh, maybe review some of those numbers. Mm -hmm. We're going to pull up some some ads and things that will have numbers and years and uh, uh, prices, and we'll do some practice with that next week. We'll take maybe uh, oh, I want to say maybe 10, 15 minutes to work that. That sounds like a good amount of time. Okay, magnifico. Ah, uh, oh, qué placer! What a delight! Ah. Uh, Qué placer y nos vemos, nos vemos la semana que viene, la semana que viene, ¿bien? Bien. Oh, okay. bien. Excelente, bien. excelente. Uh, okay, okay. Sí, entonces nos vemos. Uh, the rest of you who are not working on ear, uh, work those numbers. Do you want me to send you a video on numbers? To yeah. help you with sí, that a little bit? Okay, sí, sí, sí. Sí. I will do that as well. Uh, making a note of that now. Always a good skill to have because, you know, that whole thing with uh, el regateo, with the bargaining thing, you got to go back and forth with numbers. So you have to be able to say some numbers. When you, when you bargain over prices, you know, in Mexico, el regatear, that, that custom of, of bargaining back and forth and getting to a price in the middle that you both agree on. Es importante. Okay, entonces nos vemos el lunes. I'll see you guys next lunes. Monday. Okay. Hasta uh, lunes. Uh, 
uh, y que tengan buena semana. Gracias. 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 Muy bien. Hasta